Good evening, everyone. I have three disturbing true horror stories lined up for you today. So get comfortable and prepare for another episode of The Nightmare Society. So after listening to many creepy stories on YouTube, I've decided to make a Reddit account to submit my own that I still have not managed to get over. I've encountered a person that I'll call Window Man that has really messed me up. This happened in the summer of 2018. Some background story to help better understand the situation I was in and the layout of the apartment. My mom and I moved into this one room apartment with one of my mom's colleagues, all females, for a short period of time, about three months to be able to save up some money for another apartment, the one that we currently live in. So the apartment had a small bathroom and shower a kitchen merged with a living room, a small room separated by a sliding door and a windowed balcony. We lived on the first floor, and even I, being the short five foot four inch girl, managed to climb up into the window when I forgot my keys at home. Anyways, since the colleague needed some privacy, she chose to live in the small room. My mom would sleep on the couch in the living room and I would sleep on the balcony on a mattress. Now when I would lay on my mattress, from my point of view, I would see the living room and the couch on my right and the windows on my left, though there were some behind me that I wasn't really able to see. Alright, now to the actual story. We moved in. Everything was going great for the first month or so. I felt quite safe even though I was very suspicious from the very start of the windows since we lived on the first floor. And I should mention that I've never experienced anything paranormal, nor have I had sleep paralysis before. So one night I wake up, or at least I think so. I can't move. I can only blink my eyes and move my head. I look over to the windows and I see what looks like a third of a man's head and a hand peeking through the window. I tried to scream and get up but I couldn't move or do anything. I was so terrified. I saw the man slowly closing the window as if he was trying not to make any sound and lowering his head as if he were leaving. I was freaking out but still could not move. I saw my mom on my right sleeping on the couch and on my left my hand was hanging off the mattress and my cat was headbutting it as if he was trying to wake me up. I tried to scream again a few times but it doesn't work. I am hysterical at this point and I feel tears welling up in my eyes. Suddenly, I wake up. I shoot up from my bed, my cat still next to the mattress, and my mom still on the couch, sleeping in the same position I've seen her in. I look at the window panicking, and it's locked from the inside, just like I left it before going to sleep. I unlocked it and opened it, making sure there's nobody outside. I close and lock the window and lay back down, sobbing. I just cried myself to sleep that night. A few days later, I decided to tell my mom about the dream. I didn't want to at first because I thought that she wouldn't pay much attention to it. But since it had me so much on edge, I told her. And just as I expected, she told me that I'd been listening to too many horror stories and didn't take me too seriously. After maybe a week, I forgot about the dream and moved on. And then, one evening, everything was going fine. I was preparing myself for the next day since I had to do a big presentation in front of the whole class and I wanted to look my best. 
It was about half past midnight. I took a shower, brushed my teeth, and went to sleep as usual. My mom was still up on her phone, but about to go to sleep. I had dozed off peacefully. But suddenly I wake up for no reason and have the massive urge to look behind me at the windows. To my horror, I saw a tall man in my window, about halfway in, with one leg almost on the floor. I panicked and thought that I was dreaming again, but quickly realized that I can move. So no, I was not dreaming. Still being in a state of fear and confusion, I whispered, What the hell? And to my complete horror, the man looked up, all dark but eyes shining in the moonlight. He put on the creepiest ear-to-ear -ear grin, put a finger to his lips and said, Shh, in the most menacing way ever. I had no idea what to do, so I said louder, What the hell? And then I jumped up and screamed, What the hell? And started screaming like a banshee. The guy got startled and almost fell back. So I took the opportunity and closed and locked the window just as he was about to try to get back in. My screaming woke my mom up and she ran up asking what happened. I started nervously explaining all that happened and then we saw the dude climb up to our window again. But the one right next to me, trying to open it. As I saw that I screamed even louder and as he was opening it I pushed him and he fell down, calling me every name under the sun. He then tried to make up some crappy excuse, but in my panic state, I started yelling at him at the top of my lungs to get the hell out. I kept on yelling for about five minutes like a total crazy person until the guy finally said something along the lines of, Fine then. Almost as if I was obliged to let him in and started walking away. I slammed all the windows shut and locked them sat down on my mattress and proceeded to sob loudly as my mom was next to me trying to calm me down. We thought that was it, but a few minutes later I saw him again, climbing up our balcony, and I started screaming again, opened one of the windows and yelled so loud that I almost lost my voice. I closed and locked the window and my mom and I went to the guard to tell him what happened. I described the man to him as best I could, but since it was dark, I couldn't say much about his appearance. He told us just go home and stay calm, that he will handle the situation. When we were going back, we saw about eight neighbors of ours standing outside wondering what happened. They all gave us sympathetic looks as we went back home. My mom gave me some medicine to help calm me down and I was crying and shaking vigorously for about an hour until I was finally so exhausted that I just went to sleep with her since I didn't want to sleep on the balcony anymore. The next day I showed up to school looking like trash and when I told someone what happened, they either didn't believe me or would brush it off saying, It's fine. It's fine. You're alright now. After a few days, my mom confronted me about it and said she was sorry that she didn't take my dream seriously. Though I wasn't mad at all. Just shocked. She said that she was just about to fall asleep but woke up to me screaming. She told me that my screams were the most blood-curdling ones she's ever heard in her life. But the scariest part is that I woke up for no reason. I just had the massive urge to look back. There was absolutely no noise when the man opened the window and was climbing in. I even asked my mother if she heard anything and she said that no, it was absolutely silent. Who knows what the man would have done if I had not woken up. 
though I'm glad I didn't have to find out. The fact that also really shook me is that I had a dream of something similar happening about three weeks before it actually happened in real life. Though, sadly, I don't know what happened to that man, if he was arrested or not. We never saw him again, but either way, I'm just glad that we moved out of that apartment soon later. And to you, window man, that has traumatized me to this day. Let's not meet again. I live in a big city in Florida that can turn into vast country nothingness pretty quickly. My boyfriend's parents were out of town for a couple of weeks, so I decided to stay a weekend with him while he house sat for them. Their house is about 45 minutes away from my place. I live in the downtown area of my city, in the literal middle of nowhere. You have to drive down a one-lane dirt road for about 15 minutes before you even reach their house, which is conveniently the last house in the middle of the woods down that rough dirt road. Something straight up out of a horror movie. The closest neighbor is five minutes away, no cell phone service, etc. After a day of drinking beer moses by the pool, we decided to put on wild hogs. Totally my choice. I was high and wanted to watch a terrible movie. And make dinner. About an hour later, we were on the couch. Our edibles had just hit when two freaking cops walk up to his front door. We sprung up and asked them what was going on. They told us they had gotten two calls to 911 from inside the house, from one of the landline phones. Yeah, these people still had landline phones. We told them that it had just been us here all day and that neither of us had made the calls or even touched the phones. The cop took out his phone and showed us the number the call came from and it was the house number. They left a few minutes later just as confused as we were. As we watched them drive off, my anxiety started spiking. The cops had just been called for nothing. If we really needed them later for something, they may not be as quick to run out here. My boyfriend then picked up the house phone to see if there was a dial tone. What was on the other end of that phone was the most gut-wrenching, horrifying, paralyzing, typical horror movie type of static. Like someone was walking around with the phone. There was movement to it. I swore if we kept listening to it we would have heard breathing. In a stoned panic, we checked all five landlines in the house, including the one in his dad's shed. They were all there, untouched. I asked him if anything like this had ever happened before. His parents built the house, and he had lived there his whole life. He said no. There was just no explanation for any of this. We called his parents in the middle of all this and they were just as confused and shocked as me, him, and even the cops. He sat down and tried to figure this all out, but being the horror movie and true crime junkie that I am, I knew we had to get the hell out of there. We've all seen the freaking Strangers movie. His parents had been out of town for two weeks. The house left unattended until this night, so, you know, just free real estate for robbers and more than likely, in my mind, some hillbilly murderers. He then tried to find his dad's gun just in case it was needed, and the gun that had been hidden in the same spot for 25 years was not there, and was nowhere to be found. That really did not help the situation. 
I finally convinced him to come spend the night at my house, so we started cleaning up as fast as we could and booked it. I was doing about 85 down that one lane, now pitch black dirt road. I had never felt so much relief in my life when I finally made it on the main road. After calling all of my friends and screaming in their ears about the horror movie we had just survived, we got to my house, locked the doors, and passed out. To this day, we don't know what was going on. Nothing like that has happened since. Maybe it wasn't anything after all and we were just incredibly high and paranoid or maybe it was a couple of bloodthirsty backwoods psychopath killers. Either way, I'm happy we did not stick around to find out which one it was. To whoever or whatever was messing with us that night, let's not meet. My sister has been married for several years, but this is the first time she genuinely felt unsafe in her own home. Her husband was finishing up school and they just had a baby, so she was pretty sleep deprived. She had gotten sick and my brother-in-law wanted her to get some decent rest, so he stayed with the baby in the living room and the nursery to take care of her while my sister slept. My parents wanted to see the baby, so my brother-in-law came over to our house for a bit and let my sister rest. It should be noted that my brother-in-law is extremely paranoid, even though we live in a low-crime area. He's from a sketchy Midwestern town, though, so it makes sense. So he makes sure the doors and windows are locked before leaving and half wakes my sister up to let her know he's going to our house with the baby and that he'll pick her up some dinner on the way back. My sister sleepily agrees and then falls back asleep. Fast forward a couple of hours. My sister has to wake up to breastfeed slash pump because her chest is starting to hurt. She prolongs this and tosses and turns for a while because she was still exhausted and did not want to get up. Once she starts coming to, she realizes the house is super cold. Once she actually opens her eyes, she hears the front door shutting. But she's super out of it. Assuming it's her husband, she calls out his name but gets no answer. The room is pitch black and all of the other lights in the house are off, so she can't see anything. Suddenly she gets a really horrible feeling she can only describe as stepping into a freezing shower. She gets up and checks the thermostat, which was fine. She assumes she's just feeling cold because she's sick. She turns on some lights and does a quick turn about the house and realizes no one else is home and the front door is still locked. This obviously freaks her out and she texts her husband to ask when he'll be home. He gets home not long after. They have dinner and he stays with the baby in the living room and sleeps on the couch. My sister notices that one of the windows in their bedroom is open and she says she doesn't remember opening it, but that would explain why she was so cold earlier. Her husband makes sure to check all the windows are shut and the door is locked after my sister explains to him the weird feeling she got earlier. Later, she wakes up again around 2 a.m. to pump, and that disgusting feeling creeps up again. She shoots up out of bed and can barely make out someone standing at the foot of her bed. She thinks it's her husband, similar height and build. So she asks him to bring her some water while she's prepping to pump. The figure does not move or speak. She repeats herself, and in what she describes as the most terrifying moment of her life, he answers her. No, no, go back to sleep. 
I like to watch you sleep. The voice definitely does not belong to my brother-in-law. She turns on her side desk lamp and starts screaming at this creeper wearing all black. He just starts giggling. <laughs> her husband jolts out of his sleep and she scrambles for the knife she has in her table. And the dude just books it out of the window. He had opened it and climbed through. She knows for sure that he was watching her sleep earlier when she was napping, and that it was probably him that she had seen shutting the bedroom door earlier. They call the police and file a report, and nothing really comes of it because he technically didn't do anything besides trespassing, because they said they couldn't be sure if they could charge him with breaking and entering because my sister doesn't remember if she opened the window or not. Idiots. They have no idea how he didn't injure himself when he jumped out of the window because when my brother-in-law ran out the back to give chase, he had already disappeared. It's been a few years now and nothing ever really came of the investigation, and they had all the windows and locks replaced. So, creepy guy that likes to watch people sleep, stay away from my family. And you better hope we never meet. Thank you so much, Shark underscore Lemon, SRD dash J, and Devil in Knee Highs for their story contributions. If you'd like to submit your own story, email me at nightmare society radio at gmail.com and please hit me up on social media. My Instagram handle is at Nightmare Society Radio, and my Twitter handle is at Society underscore Radio. Until next time, stay safe.